Well, Kelly, welcome to the show. Thank you, Atlas. Great to be here with you. It is an honor. You have created very powerful content, um, distilled the spirit and science very well. Hmm. It's one of the things that I'm extremely passionate about. So I'm very much honored to have this conversation together and also be able to share um, what you've distilled and also advance the mission of creating more love and abundance, unity um, on earth. Yeah, beautiful. I'm Excellent. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> and we'll have several conversational points throughout the show on effortless mindfulness, the direct path, the art and science of awakening, awake awareness, we'll go through a glimpse practice, and we will share some of the action items that Locke is currently offering, including his mobile meditation program, including his exceptional books, and his YouTube channel, Instagram, Twitter, all those links will be in the bio below. Would love for you guys to check them out if this episode resonates. All right. So, man, right. I feel like the best place for us to start is the direct path. Yeah. <clears throat> and just the importance of it, um, what, what it is and the importance of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a beautiful place to start because it, it is maybe what's the difference between the gradual path, um, which is the more common or, uh, well-known variety of meditation. Uh, so the premise that makes it the direct path is the hypothesis that the awakeness, the freedom, the love that we're seeking isn't something that's created or developed. It's already here within us and even as us. Yeah. So it's essentially who we've always been. It's just literally subtler, deeper, wider, um, higher, but more essential so that with a direct uh, approach, like a glimpse, we can shift kind of background to foreground, what's hidden comes into the foreground, and then it becomes more the ground of our being from which becomes the new normal, the new operating system. Uh, which we then lose it and come back. So just to say that in my experience, the direct path is <clears throat> kind of a way to glimpse directly, but it's not instant enlightenment, meaning uh, you don't stay there. It's uh, small glimpses, many times repeated. So it's direct realization, but then gradual unfolding. Yes. Um, a core part of what I feel you shared there is to um, bring the background into the foreground is a really good way to put it. Um, so let's talk about that more. So there's a sense of, we could say, I or beingness or presence before the name, the identity, the stories that is shared. Mm -hmm. And that we would like to bring that background into the foreground in a mm. sense. Yeah. And then what, 
what is the direct path of doing so is the question, right? So this is, I think this is one of the most important questions. And I'll start by saying that even within my particular approach, there's many doorways. So the idea is that uh, people have different learning styles and they have different obstacles that keep us from recognizing and realizing this essence of our true nature or this awake consciousness. So there's not one way and there's certainly not one tradition, but there are some simple principles that are similar. Uh, and there's a couple of, the two main ways I would say are what's called the, the resting method or the do nothing method, right? which is kind of letting go and letting be. And some traditions like Zen call it shikantaza, which is just sitting. So the, the uh, metaphor, which I love there, that's almost like a, uh, a poem is uh, muddy water, let stand, becomes clear. Right. So there, it, it shows that in some ways it, feels like a background foreground but actually the water the clarity is not in the background only it's always everywhere right it's just being obscured by the primacy of the denser consciousness uh, so when you sit and don't engage and re uh, re-rustle up the <laughs> the the mud by active identification and engagement then it may settle. Now, that can be direct, but that also is actually one of the main practices of the gradual path, which means you sit that way for uh, three years or 30 years or three lifetimes, and then it may settle enough to be able to be uh, able to live from it. Because when it clears, the next stage is, okay, so then it's clear, but you're sitting and you're not moving. So what happens when you recognize it, then you important to realize that's who I am. And then what's the relationship to the mud so that you can get up, stand up and begin to walk and create and relate without just saying, Oh, I better go back and meditate again. I have to sit still as if stillness or silence is the absence mm -hmm of sound or movement right. so that's one that's one method and a little bit about it then the other method is is more uh of what i do which is a little more of the inquiry method or the looking method or the unhooking of awareness which is already identified or attached and having it drop or open and immediately know itself or return home to the subtler dimension, which then recognizes that that's the ground or the source from which energy is actually made of it. So there's a con interconnected feeling of unity or flow where you're more the ocean of awareness arising as movement energy, then as patterns of consciousness, thought, feelings, sensations, subpersonalities, and then a human body, still primarily awake consciousness, but, and that's the, the key is to learn how to be 51% awake consciousness and then welcome everything else. Right. And those two can also be very much like one. Yes. With, yeah. I and found you can start with one. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. And this is great because it it's important to share that what mm -hmm. we're what we're describing is what we feel like is the most direct way. Mm -hmm. Um and there's an incessant amount of movement, which is um, deeply conditioned by identity and 
separation and location and lack and all of these other things. And the, the slowing down of those oscillations of thinking can bring us more inward. And that's why rest is just such a beautiful way to put it. Do nothing, inquire. Mm-hmm. And through that process, that can lead us to feel whole mm-hmm. when we're doing nothing. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and that's so beautiful. Yeah. Like I don't have to do anything to be perfect to be the absolute to be the highest possible and that itself is peace that's love right that's the the freedom the realization of the kind of okayness or essential well-being which has a feeling of unity or interconnectedness and innocence like a that it's deeper than the trauma, it's deeper than the feelings of worthlessness and not good enough and subtler, deeper meaning subtler and more essential so that those other feelings are welcome to arise to you. So that's one of the simplest inquiries that I have is is to shift from focusing on what's arising to find what is it arising to what or who is this all arising to pleasant or unpleasant the traditional mindfulness is looking at the contents of consciousness noticing it's coming and going it's it's arising and passing but then effortless mindfulness kind of begins by having awareness look back to itself look back through the meditator to open to the field of already awake consciousness that's awake without our help that then is arising as the aliveness not not being caught in what i call the uh, witness protection program of being dissociated and looking from a detached disembodied view which can be a halfway point and can be very helpful uh transition but just staying open and coming home to embodiment and then open-heartedness or uh, kind of the fabric of love that feels there's no f- non-fear, non-worry, non-shame to which fear, worry, or shame are welcome to arise and isn't spiritually bypassed. But now the psychological healing and the physical releasing of being kind of frozen um, and protective can begin to thaw out and be included. Yes. Right. Yeah. I feel we're already, um, yeah, deeply diving into um, awake awareness, which is excellent. And um, the art and science the practice many glimpses repeatedly mm-hmm. and uh, stabilization yeah um, yeah the last bit you shared has also been deeply resonant because there there feels to be um, a spaciousness in the background that can be recognized and then that can be brought into the foreground and then that can feel like love for everything that Mm. is and so then that sort of that duality collapses Mm -hmm. but it's it can be a helpful duality at first um right i found that to be also very powerful yeah and it it then becomes a multi-dimensional Uh, reality meaning that primarily there's a uh, you know a pure awareness that's empty or void or infinite and then there's uh, a unity or love that's interconnected with everyone and everything and then 
there's these unique waves of the ocean of awake consciousness, which are particular individuals that have personalities and 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 then can see each other uh, with integrity and uh, respect and equality, you know, almost naturally if you're looking through the eyes of the heart. Yes, nice. Yeah, and I've known noticed that you also speak of it like a, a simultaneity, mm -hmm. right? Being across all of those domains at the yeah. same time, those dimensions. Yeah. And then that helps us be, as you've said, aware of distinction and unity simultaneously. Yeah. And that that's very powerful because it, it's a very holistic perspective because it takes into account the uh, the traditions of unity mm -hmm. and love spaciousness and yet at the same time it takes into account the beauty of the individuation yeah and then seeing all um from that makes it so that when individuations interact or engage they're coming from that yeah. unified love and yet at the same time the unique expressiveness yeah. Yeah. yeah and the yeah the messiness of being human is just part of the grist for the you know that isn't uh doesn't have to take over but it has to kind of detox or thaw out because of the conditioning and the not only our own personal conditioning but almost like ancestral just passing on generational uh cultural uh that that can begin to um liberate but the liberation often as it moves out takes over for a while <laughs> like Arr! you know anxiety fear yeah. worry. and then it's like so that m magic move of effortless mindfulness once you've done a practice sitting still to be able to unhook or what i call unhook but uh let go and actually have awareness step back into that which is spacious and pervasive yeah to be with what's arising from a more holistic view loving self with a capital s if we use that language then whatever parts of us that are angry or fearful or traumatized uh are being held and welcomed right as they throw a tantrum right. and we're not acting out from them but we're not repressing and acting in we're actually letting our full humanness because we've discovered that the open-hearted awareness is the capacity to be fully human yes nice i'm so happy that we're on this healing thread yeah so by recognizing this open-hearted spaciousness mm -hmm. we can fearlessly and courageously lovingly spaciously be with anything anything That's and right. all of our conditions um and it can be hard to look at many of the conditions oh, yeah. um but in doing so we love them into dissolution and integration and transmutation and in freedom greater freedom yeah that's right yeah and there seems to be nothing that i found really more powerful than that as w another huge part of the direct path is yes, that yeah exactly if it comes back so that's you know the beauty of you what you're saying both the direct path and the healing so discovering the awake consciousness which is unhooked or detached in order to be more unified and and embodied while remaining infinite and intimate yeah that's great infinite and intimate <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah ah uh, that's that's beautiful how important healing is on the direct path yeah
so important for us and for everyone we engage with, you know, just to realize when you hear someone's story, you, you can't believe it if they, those who like, they look like they have it all together or something and they just start being honest, you're going like, oh my God, everyone is just carrying around all this stuff. <laughs> <you know? laughs> right. And most recently it's been very beautiful to recognize that those are each individual's treasures. Yeah. To yeah. look at it their own time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's like no urgency. Uh, there's no need to generate a catalyst. Right. It's just timeless mm -hmm. for them to look at that unique treasure inside yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just to, yeah just to be able to show up for the unfolding so not pushing the river but not you know kind of staying underwater too much you know so that you see where and feel what's going on as whatever the next thing that's ready to to come forth for, you know, to be heard and met and, and loved up, you know? <laughs> yes, yes. And it's, it's actually a really, it's a really beautiful way to, to share that the direct path can be both this very, like, powerful direct inquiry uh, into the nature of reality and identity. Um, and yet at the same time, it can really be this like, hey, I, I feel a deep uh, trauma in my life that I would like to look at and I don't necessarily know how to. And I would like your help in holding that open heart space while I do. Yes. And that's another way. <laughs> yeah, it is. And, you know, that part, as you say it beautifully, you kind of give a lot of space to that, you know, because it can be with a friend, with a therapist, in a group that's a supportive group. Um, and but it's it is that kind of finding a safe um you know same same but other person other human being that you can be feel listened to and you can kind of get that out so at some point you know whether it's therapy or coaching or or a good friend or two or three if you need as you go along uh to tell your to tell that story it's not to tell, to have those parts of you that have been hidden away, to let them be heard by another. And then ultimately the one they're looking for is you. The one they're looking for is that you that's not you, that's bigger than you, that's essentially you, that has no self, that's a self, <laughs> or whatever that is, <laughs> that paradoxical, Right. Feeling of like, wait a minute, this isn't me. It's bigger than me. Oh, but it's the source of me. That's that's that feeling that can't be put into words. That's where a lot of direct path get gets caught. It's like, oh, it's not, oh, I'm out of duality, I'm pure awareness. And now life is just a movie playing on the field of awareness coming and going. It's like, okay, keep going, come on back, you know, because it's not a movie it's actually an ocean of life and connection that you're in it when you're in it you're you still have that support that's bigger than you and then you can be your be your unique uh personality um that's just the flavor of the wave you know right hmm Right. Another 
uh, powerful way that I've seen be a common approach has been sort of using the mind to study the symbols of what I is mm -hmm. and then anchoring in the body in that interconnected oceanic unity uh, rooted earthed basically um yeah. yes so say more about the symbols like uh, say more about the first part of that as that though mind understands the symbols yeah. right right so there's like a there's like an endless uh possibility space of imagination and symbology yeah and there is <clears throat> It's very much mirrored by the internet, let's say. Right. Okay. And it's a big, um, lots of hay and very few needles. Okay. Yep. Right. And so by using the mind to look and find the needles mm -hmm. of what I is, yep. try and identify them, put them into um, maybe some notes or a distillation of sorts. Yeah. across the ancient wisdom traditions modern science things like that yeah that's right. and, and then embody right. it which is more about the heart and the root just as an example so then everything can come whoo yeah you know online like that and it feels different when everything's online like that that's been really recent <laughs> For me yeah. is coming more online like that and sometimes it can show up a bit you know a bit ah, like primordial it can show up a bit yeah. uh and that feels great too no that's great that's gotta it's gotta have that juice you know um you can't you know that's what one of these little side eddies of some of the spiritual uh maps that start to get people caught is if oh i get it you're not supposed to have any emotions okay oh that oh let me try that you know and then it's like no 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 that don't don't do that you know maybe when you detach from over emotionality you'll have freedom from it and you'll be in a kind of observing uh accepting place but then when you come back you have you're still open and you have you start to what i call shake and bake you kind of get this kind of fullness of juicy life uh but what you're describing sounds like yeah as i was saying there's different doorways and paths like in hinduism uh the jhana path which is the path of knowing or knowledge sometimes it's knowledge but it's like you're doing looking to the you know con your consciousness is going from gross to very subtle to really and then it just drops in in from the mind in to with consciousness within which is connected out so that's that door which is a great door yeah All right ah it's just it's really warm it feels really good just being yeah. together it feels great yeah <sighs> This feels like a, a good time to explore um, a glimpse practice. As you were sharing, there's uh, doors. Yeah. There's ways to access. We were talking about the direct path through all these different facets of the diamond, including healing or yana path. Yeah. So let's go. Uh, okay. Yeah, let's do this. Yeah. So I, I, it feels like there's two, if you don't mind, I'll do one now and one later that almost complements it. Please. Uh, so, so this one, um, okay. I'll start with kind of, we were at the second one, but I'll go back to the first one. <laughs> so when we started, we said that often the, the mud that settles is kind of conditioning and kind of operating from important but more gross level uh physical emotional mental 
and missing and those three physical and mental emotional mental form a self a small self that is trying to survive as a separate human being which is important since we are animals in the world and there are fast moving objects and things like that so but that overly uh dominant definition and training and conditioning uh can cover over uh, what's already here behind more open subtler non-physical non-emotional and non-thought based so the little small self tends to uh, orient by thought going to thought and creating this little thinker and doer and problem solver to try to be safe so it's probably trying to you know what's going on out there is there any problem out there is there any problem in here what's going on out there is there any problem out here so that problem solving function as we get smarter and more more successful it actually gets stronger so one of the main obstacles to people who really actually learn a lot and grow a lot is their strong uh, problem solver ego center their small self so if that can relax we might be able to feel kind of a more subtle not sleepy and not thought based alert awake consciousness that's more spacious and pervasive so that's the premise that's the kind of description so here's the little inquiry that is being asked both to the problem solver initially but actually is a invitation to the awake consciousness so the inquiry is to look with understand with thought and then look with awareness to feel what's here now just now when there's no problem to solve just understanding the words and then not looking to thought but letting the problem solver relax and then feeling that which is aware when there's no problem to solve and then being aware of it And then what's it like to rest as it, as this? And thoughts can move, but just not getting on the train. And then resting as this awareness, what's the relationship to vibration, sensation, thought, emotion, and the world? without going back to create a problem solve. But if everything's included from this more spacious, alert, non-thought based, and yet flow like a flow consciousness, it could move your hand, you could use thought, but then you could let your hand go and you could let go of thought and have clear peace of mind and you could respond to something if you needed to in the world so that's a little uh glimpse practice that goes through some of the stages of awakening from awakening to awakening as and then uh, awakening as being <laughs> so good <sighs> i'm curious if if this you're familiar with uh papanka papancha sanasanka yeah. Right, right. Um, so, and where um, 
papancha is very much this weaving or this mental fabrication and and then this nibbana is the cessation of the mental weaving or the fabrication yeah and and so that 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 has been such an instrumental part i feel also of this as what you just described through this glimpse practice what happens when we just slow down that fabrication and that mental proliferation about our sense of self and our identity and sense of others and the past and the future and all of that Mm -hmm. and then when we just rest and we rest and we relax back it's just Mm -hmm. and then i love how you said that there will be some arising but it's not taking us off of out of that that's right yeah and then the more that we just feel that and then bring that into right bring it in bring that in and then that is love (laughs) the unity is love that's right yeah so yeah papancha uh sanasanka is conceptual proliferation is from the pali language and one of the kind of linchpin sutras between, I think, uh, insight meditation or Theravada or gradual practice uh, to direct practice, because it kind of gives one of the linchpins, as you were saying. And the thing is, even Nirvana is not, um, as, as from the direct path, isn't eliminating from more of a tantric direct path. It's not eliminating the uh, thoughts. It's just that you don't get on the train and you don't have to orient to thought that thoughts are like uh, mental sensations being observed not by a thought-based i think therefore i am that's the key is it's the thinker more than the thoughts the thoughts are not a problem the brain actually from neuroscience doesn't stop no matter how quiet you are it's going to be active but we have a habit of not only paying attention, but then forming a thinker. And, uh, you know, from there, whereas when you're in a flow state, uh, it's higher consciousness and you can respond faster without orienting to thought, without creating an ego center. Mm. So that's the feeling. And then it feels like there's no thoughts, but they're actually kind of gone into the background. Um, so one of the examples I use, I ask people, like, if you bring your awareness to the bottom of your left foot right now, and just feel the nerve endings, and all that sensation that's there. Like, so, you know, if you can feel that, yeah. Mm -hmm. So a minute ago, it was in the background. But if you had a habit, you know, which pain often you know, chronic pain will give you that habit. But if you just started paying attention to sensations in my left foot, how are you doing today? My left foot's fine. And my big toe is a little better than yesterday, but my other toes are not so good. But then you'd be, whereas you're, if you just let the sensation in your right foot and the mental sensations in your head go into the background, And then the key is awareness of awareness. So instead of awareness of thought, which then creates thought going to thought, you unhook awareness of thought, which is the first uh, mindful move of awareness of thoughts coming and going. So now you're aware of that, that's half step. Now be aware of awareness. And then as, then rest is awareness. And then as that awareness notice the arising and the interconnection and the unity with sensation, thought, feeling, and the world. So there's kind of a awareness behind you, within you, in front of you, and aliveness behind you, within you, in front of you. But where you're aware from is no longer either the small self in the middle of your head, nor a mindful witness that's watching contents You've kind of discovered, kind of dropped 
open and included this new um, open mind, open heart to mm. infinite, intimate, you know, mm. feeling of being. So that that just that description that sounds like oh well that's boy that sounded a little complicated. Well, you know what? It's about six moves. It's not that. Complicated. It's really not. It's new. It's unique. It's 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 like a little weird. You gotta go. What do you mean? Awareness, awareness. Then awareness is aware of itself. Then it, you know, it's like okay, that that I don't know any of that. That's true. You don't know yet, but it's 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 fairly simple. It's not easy. It takes what it takes, but it's available. It's learnable. It's teachable. It's almost a necessity at this point in our uh, evolution and. Yeah. And just human development. Um, yeah. Perhaps <clears throat> let's see if if this um, way of describing also resonates. You said that there will be another glimpse practice that we'll do. So is describing the 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 obsessions with identity and all stories can sort of be at least from I've also understood it seemed like a little a Barbie house And that the relaxation of the story and of the identity is sort of the ability to begin seeing through all eyes simultaneously or seeing as the whole itself. Being that. Mm -hmm. And then it was seen that the stories and identity of the Barbie house was beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it served typically as the drill sergeant of awakening, suffering. Mm -hmm. And then from this, from this realization, one can then recognize that the way that like you described flow consciousness that one can be that and live from that and express as that and and then that can hold space for all of the other barbie houses mm -hmm. um yeah <laughs> I hadn't used I hadn't used I must admit I hadn't used Barbie houses as one of my <laughs> main images, but that's good. <laughs> so, so you know, one of the unique things that having come from uh, being at the same time training as a kind of consciousness meditation person and and a psychotherapist is kind of bringing those two worlds together and then adding neuroscience and other things but so currently the the internal understanding is that this awake consciousness when it comes back and then that problem solver isn't the center the ego isn't the center the self isn't the center but it's not like there's nobody home it's not an empty barbie house it's not an empty the actual ego that was trying to be me that was trying to solve problems is an ego function that was trying to be an ego identity so it doesn't need to be killed. It doesn't need to be gotten rid of. It's not that it is relatively, uh, it's relatively real. It's ultimately not real. There isn't any solid separate self there, but it's functionally uh, can be part of the team. So once you realize that the, all the characters in the house uh, are parts of us, you know, the, the part that 
uh, you know, the worker bee part, the judging, even the, you know, the critic and the judge are all trying to find love. They're trying to help. They're just confused and they're burdened with these kind of uh, ignorances mm. or misinformation. And, but they have energetic value. You know, they, they have life and they can be, you know, we're kind of multiple uh, sub personalities once we're, but the key is who, who's aware of them has changed radically. So that changes, but then we come back, as you say, the house is still, here, we don't have to keep acting like, no, there's no me. I go to the grocery store and things end up in my cart and there's no person named Locke. There's just, you know, which I've heard. And I'm like, what is it in your cart? Is it things you tend to like or is it all cat food and you don't have a cat? You know, it's like, if you don't unify, then you're kind of dissociated or uh, spiritually bypassed. So finding a way to understand and to feel, all right, what is happening here? So this subpersonality or part space psychology seems to go very well, because then you can have, you can start to feel anxious and go, all right, where am I feeling anxious? I'm feeling in my throat. All right, well, where is it located? Is it in my head? Am I, no, just like right here. All right, can I step back and be aware of that anxious part of me and then say oh part of me is anxious okay and is there part of me that's not anxious yeah there's part of me that's excited about what's happening and there's part of me that is fearful and there's part of me that's like it's all going to be all right so (laughs) you are aware of these parts of you then that one part doesn't you know possess you take you over as if i am anxious i need to try not to be anxious I better go meditate and not be anxious. Like, okay, we'll just step out in a direct way, be that which isn't anxious, and notice this isn't anxious. And now don't make it spiritualize it away, just like, okay, stop being anxious because I'm truly the non-anxious awareness. Then come back and say, who's anxious? What part of you is anxious? What are you anxious about? So it's almost like being with inner children uh, so then they tell a little story because they've been holding it and they're trying to, you know, tell the truth. And if we can then start to meet that and listen and be with, then they just relax. They start to go like, all right, well, uh, you know, uh, nobody's listening to me. And I was like, okay, I hear you that nobody's listening. <laughs> well, nobody's listening to me. Okay. I'm here listening, saying, hearing you say no one's listening. And they're like, all right, so you're listening. It's okay. So, so it starts to um, be this relationship with those parts, it's, but even the you know the rageful parts, the panicky, right. parts, the hateful, are just like they're just have something to say. <laughs> they were hurt, or they were right. You know, they need to be heard. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. <clears throat> mm-hmm. It's really powerful to have non-resistance to the Barbie house, uh, Mm -hmm. to have healing to the Barbie house. And then that is what then uh, unwinds those conditions and contractions. Um, I was doing some yard work today and I was uh, noticing resistance to the yard work. Oh, there could be a, a more... Uh, rich expression of the universe right now uh, through this vehicle mm-hmm. than yard work. <laughs> and then there was the, the relaxation of that resistance. And that was all that needed to happen in order for this to become the yard work itself. Yeah. And that was peace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's the, uh, that's the, that's the process. Once you have access, which is why the direct path, I feel, can be done, you know, certainly in the midst of doing everything else and growing up. And, but once you have access to that, then when you get gripped by something like a resistant part that's like, 
I should, you know, like a spiritual ego, I should be doing yard work in a spiritual way that makes me feel, and then you just go like, all right, well, that's an opinion. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, yes. Oh, great. Is this good time for the second? Sure. Yeah. Glimpse. Excellent. So, so this one is, uh, I'll do a little story because it has a little neuroscience in it, but uh, so in the, like the first uh, neuroscientist that studied meditation, a guy named Herbert Benson, who wrote some books, he was a Harvard professor. So he, he went over to Tibet in the end of a three-year retreat with a big group of Tibetan monks. And he brought all these, you know, they had like these... Uh, suitcases and, and uh, huge containers to bring all the equipment over there. They did this EEG on the monks and that, you know, which is like this bathing cap with little nodules on it. It's the way they measure it. So he sets up and he starts talking to the young monks who are pretty much in their advanced stage of the last part of their three-year retreat. And he says, okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this cap with these nodules and we're gonna measure your meditation. We're gonna put it on your head and they all start laughing. <laughs> and then he's like, and the head monk is like, no, no, please respect these Western scientists. They've come from far away, you know? It's like, okay, okay. It's like, so when we measure your meditation, then they're, <laughs> they start laughing. And then finally they ask, what are you laughing about? He said, well, when we experience meditation, we experience it here and here in the heart space. We don't, we experience this as empty, as gone. So they were saying, you know, in terms of our experience, you may be able to measure it there, but that's not where it's happening. It's happening. We've dropped from head to heart mind, mm -hmm. bodhicitta. So this meditation, I kind of picked up on that and it's called dropping from head to heart space. So the premise from this direct practice um, approach is that you don't look down like you would watching your breath from your head using your attention uh, to your chest or your belly, that literally you have awareness itself as, a, as identified with thought, unhook and decenter and then feel as if your awareness is aware of your jaw and your smile from directly from within, direct perception, then feel as if your awareness drops into your throat and neck and then drops into your body and then behind your heart space into your heart space. So you're aware of your heart space from your heart space. So that's the description. So now that's just to give you a sense so you don't have to listen too much to my words. You can just kind of feel it. So the sense is that I'm talking not to you, the ego or the meditator or the intention, intentional one who does things well. I'm talking to you, the awake consciousness, which is identified with thought and you can move yourself down because you're aware from everywhere already. So this is the premise. You don't have to feel it or know it or believe it, but try it. Let's see what happens, yeah? So just feel that sense of uh, seeing and hearing that goes to the center of your head, to feel that sense of identification or normal sense of seeing consciousness, hearing consciousness, thinking consciousness. Just find that location of where are you hearing from? Where do you see from? Where are you thinking? And then just notice the premise that awareness is what thoughts are made of and awareness is identified or attached to those thoughts and awareness can simply unhook and step back. Into more open primary space. And then from that openness, awareness can actually feel your body directly from within. So it drops from head to your smile and your jaw and see whether you can feel this shift so that you're feeling your jaw and smile directly from within 
and then feel like a globe of invisible awareness or as if the center is dissolving you feel dropped into your throat and your neck just feel that aliveness space and awareness direct perception and then feel as if awareness can move itself and drop below your neck into your upper body and just feel your body as if perhaps for the first time directly from within the awareness within your body from which your body is made just drop open drop below and behind your emotional heart until you find this kind of safe heart space this heart mind or this mm -hmm. and then go deep like into a river and then into a space within the atoms so that you're aware of your heart space you're aware from your heart space you're aware as your heart space so it can even kind of open up back mm -hmm. through the middle of your body and start to become aware back behind you of the awareness that has you back so surrender that globe of awareness back at the speed of awareness until it discovers the awareness that's already aware and like an ocean of awareness that is becomes dancing aliveness feel that awareness is equally spacious and then pervasive as your body and then feel uniquely as if you're almost looking out of the eyes of your heart so your eyes are like periscopes receiving information goes down to your heart mind and then can interconnected with everything and everyone without projecting without analyzing just being seeing dropped open and including everything connected to kind of a boundless heart that connects to your whole body top to bottom but doesn't relocate in your head stays dropped mm -hmm. so see what that feels like and you know certainly you can try it now and then but see if you can kind of try it when you're taking a walk sometime like drop and then just walk and just feel the nature or just simply you know do an activity that feels like you can stay dropped open behind you kind of in a panoramic way and then receiving with your eyes opening open in this wisdom mind this um, mm. It has discrimination, but not uh, judgment in its negative judgment. Mm -hmm. Discriminate. Gorgeous. Huh. It's powerful to use the word soma or somatic in, yeah. co in contrast to the mind because mm -hmm. yeah. it 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 feels so much like it's 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 here yeah. Yeah. yeah right and from 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 here you know and then that right out the fullness of it yeah it's like that yeah Yes. Kind of the the chi, the chi when it's more like chi, then then kundalini kind of goes up the channel, but this kind of opens like the wings of the heart, kind of oh, has the same, but it doesn't stay too too tight. It's, yeah. Opens that up, but it opens this up too. So that you have right. To, oh, that's great. Oh, that's great. So there's a there's like a wings of the heart. And then there also feels to be a, a rooting, an earthing. Right. Uh, from the Dantian through the back of the spine, right. like almost sometimes through the leg, but sometimes not even through the leg, almost like your spine goes into the ground. Yes. 
it's like <coughs> and that's the earth you know the power source and then and then you can be aware of all that because that's the area that has certain repressed a lot of repressed yes life force sexuality right. uh, hunger trauma power so you need right. the, you need the 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 infinite and then you need the open hearted to go down yeah try to just go right to the to the belly chakra the root chakra it's tough tough work because you just it's stronger than any ego it's gonna blast you out so finding this resource then you find its its power because it wants to be liberated too it wants to do its natural thing about power and sexuality and hunger and it doesn't want to be confused and wants to be life force life force natural natural right i've also recently been feeling like the the breath the breath itself rather than being in yeah. Sim symbols and concepts very shallow breath that there's this there's like a rooted heartfelt somatic yeah sourcefulness to the to the breath to feeling that oceanicness and waveness yeah. um and a powerful for me and i've seen this is a very powerful one um down here mm -hmm. down here to have as we unlock the fearlessness and the courage to look yeah. one of the one of the powerful ones is uh the relation of this mm -hmm. to all yeah right so it's self image is mm -hmm. one of the most subtle ones let's say to to look at and investigate and transmute any lack separation um yeah. desire to be seen validated unworthiness yeah. yeah that 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 feeling of you know the heart is the center but it has to go down and up like often people feel the the ground of being like right here at at the belt line it's almost like like, mm, and that's kind of the connection between in and out. So it's not so much of a chakra or a energy center. It's like literally the inside and out are the same. The world and me are connected <laughs> right here, like, woof. right. And then there's, you know, more energetic stuff going on, but that's a place to rest the ground ground quality and then i ask people usually by doing something go out and we come in and then it's like well how do you feel and someone will say grounded and i said well where do you feel grounded like and they often go here or everywhere and i say well what's the ground made of and they go well, what's made of the ground no 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 is it like made of earth and they go like no not earth like what i don't know it's really grounded really safe it's really okay like never before it's me it's it's like oh it's made of awareness it's made of nothing but not nothing like oh awake nothing it's made of the infinite that's here right, right. so that's the you know that's the thing it sounds like i mean i hope people are getting this if you haven't gotten it it's it's not it's not that weird it's not that far foreign and far away it really isn't it's learnable it definitely is learnable um it's just subtle like you'll make your own words to it the words you know or the pointers that we're describing from our experience are one way to kind of get a sense oh okay i'm in the territory a little bit <laughs> is that a little like this it's not like that but then finding a door and a direct way to have that awareness be the knowing and the knower of itself and then of energy and then of your body 
most people have known it. They, uh, in fact, you know, that flow consciousness I often use, I say, what do you do in your free time that you love? <laughs> you know, and then people are like, I walk in the woods, I garden, I play with animals, I play with children, I surf, I dance, I paint, I, you know, I say, well, what if you did that in order to get out of yourself and into a more interconnected field called awake consciousness? Like, it's not about the thing or the activity, that's the door. What if you didn't focus on the hill you're climbing and getting to the top and looking out over at the, at the sky? What if you then looked out the sky, got that feeling and then felt back who's experiencing this? And then what if you could access that any place, anytime? Because you know the door, you already do it. In fact, you're, you're compelled to do it and you call it fun. Right. <laughs> nice. Yeah. But you don't know that you know it. You, you think it's about, you know, the person who plays music can find it. The other person who, um, you know, goes surfing, like the person who goes, plays music may not get it when they're surfing, the person who, you know, because that's not their door. It's not about surfing or music. It's about something that allows you to drop into that out of the ego, into the interconnected field that's subtle and knowing and highly functional. That yes. can see activities totally isn't just sitting still, but yeah. has the stillness to it. Right. Stillness, yeah. Right. As though it it brings the realization of stillness into all movement in a simultaneity. Yeah, that's right. Ah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's just beautiful. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's so beautiful. I mean, that the, you know that first question resonates again. Like, what is the direct practice and you know, is it, how do you do it? And that's, that's what I've been like about, like, what is it? And how do you do it? And then how do you share it? You know, how do people, other people get it? Because the water's so good. It's like, the water's great. Come on in. Because when you taste it, it's just like, oh my God, so many people say, I can't believe this has been here all along. And nobody ever showed me how, or, oh, now I remember how I naturally experienced it, but I didn't know that's what it was. Right. right. And there's access points, which can feel like pre is some, in some ways, pre 18 months uh -huh. of age, that baby like innocence, uh, another one uh, can feel like the saturation of God's love mm -hmm. being omnipresent. Yeah. Um, so perhaps a sage like wisdom, mm -hmm. um, perhaps a bit of like reptilian or primordial chimp like playfulness and groundedness, yes. um, and and that yeah, and to have this available as a <clears throat> many faceted access points mm -hmm. to the diamond that's right here always yeah. right here um it's gold yeah
yeah the 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 awareness based knowing is what's just coming to me so we're you know i'm talking about that term i use awake awareness it just means that it's not attention it's not it's not um uh you know i am aware of something it's it it's a awareness that's already awake and alert so it's alert without using thought because it was alert in the 18 month year old baby and it's alert uh post you know using thought and in a flow consciousness it's alert and functional and then the implicit memory can just be a program that yes. is used as needed yes but that that's the new uh, operating system nice possible it's awareness based primacy of awareness not thought and thought is made of awareness so we're not getting rid of thought thought is useful our hands are useful our emotions are useful right and where are we operating from and you described each of those facets the ape-like one and the you know the love and the you know each one has the awareness because you've shifted into the awareness-based knowing and then the aliveness will come out in different expressions right right i love that so open spacious mm -hmm. pervasive. and then pervasive that that a lot and then that alive expressiveness through mm -hmm. <sighs> and i love how you brought flow where where whatever is that activity that is sought after is just the cessation of the identification right. and stories because it's the you it's dissolved into the very isness of what is that yeah. and um in a very highly functional way now yeah <laughs> yeah because you're still so good i mean steph curry is shooting and he's not a separate person he he you know it he that is it's the very three-pointer happening yeah. itself and the violinist or the gardener or the hiker or whatever the activity is is that that is and it's scientific as well which yes. i wanted to yeah. to just bring to recognition as well which we're at least let's see if this is aligned with you as well that it seems to be the cessation of the default mode network and the activation of the central executive network the flow network um modulated by the salience network yeah it well it's interesting because i was there's a um i was part of a research project at um nyu with uh zoran joseph povic is the scientist um and what he considers what it is is the balance the balance of the default mode network and the task mode network are both simultaneously on so what it seems to be at least from this this theory that we have this alternating two alternating networks that alternate about every 20 seconds they look out and then 20 seconds they look in so in terms of meditation so certainly you know that in terms of distraction everyone knows that but when you try to focus on your breath which is a task about 20 seconds in, if you start to really look at it, your mind will wander. Well, what is it? It's because you're not concentrating? No, because the network just alternated. Now it's gonna, it's gonna look, it's looking out. Now it looks in to daydream or to thought. Um, and then you have to, 20 seconds later, you'll say, oh, I, that's right, I was meditating, bring it back. And here's the interesting thing. When you do one pointed meditation, focus on your breath, you repress the default mode network and you just put on the task mode. Mm. So you create a kind of calm, but it's a repressed calm. So you're kind of comfortably numb, calm, and then it can't last when you try to function because you can't function, function from just external 
because you have no creativity. So default mode has creativity. It has uh, kind of an inner life to it. So what we did, he had a, us, a group of us who are able to do this more Buddhist non-dual, which is equally balancing outside and inside or task mode and internal. Mm. And what it showed is that instead of alternating, the networks were both on at the same time. Right. So then what happens is when you feel that they're on, you feel this evenness or this uh, continuousness of unity. Yes. You know, this sense that, oh, I'm aware of what I'm thinking and I'm aware of the world. And they're both kind of the same. They're both have this, this right. connection and they're very soft and they're very kind of happy and flowing. So perhaps a way to express it is that there's a tremendous amount of our day-to-day um, -day intelligence that is in the weaving or the fabricating, which is an excessiveness, let's say, compulsiveness in the rumination default mode, and that the direct path or the inquiry um, into inner kingdom of experience, that that is the toggling inward into perhaps the concentration, the um, that central executive network's ability to focus, mm -hmm. and that through that process, then we can target what is the subject, what is the background, what is the nature of this, and then finally, upon sort of recognition, um, we can then have that very much that between those two, both lit up. Mm -hmm. And there's a equin equanimity, there's a flowness. Um, so I'm no longer I'm no longer competing to, um, to kind of calm down right. the bar, the Barbie house. That's right. Um, yeah, because if you get lost in the default mode network, you can be in daydream and past memories and flooded by trauma and worry and triggered. And if you're so a lot of people go into work mode and become workaholics, because then you're just avoiding the the default mode network right tasks over and over again. And even some of the, you know, the phone is going down the rabbit hole. Yes. Outside because you're avoiding the inner yes in the world exactly and, and so so the feeling of when you're when you balance the, the two and when you're aware from open-hearted awareness is you're not aware from your attentional system you actually feel like you're aware from the field yes interconnected with the object like it's over there but there's some connection to it through this ocean of awareness and i'm aware from here to the to the you know from everywhere um i'm not aware like a flashlight right attentional system uses a flashlight my mindful witness uses like a floodlight to watch thoughts feelings sensations this is like a ocean yes ocean connection that is has a panoramic feel so even it's never connected there it's always connected I love this. This, <laughs> this is so good. Um, I, I, uh, I've also shared how there's an obsession with the with the devices, yeah. and they can be so helpful for us to recognize what's happening, which is the obsession on the object, yes. and then we just trace back to oh well, there's a perception happening, and then well, what is the perceiver what's the subject itself what are other subjects and through that like inquiry process which i think the social dilemma was a great um catalyst yes. to to see that right. um and then like you described there's uh the there's like this witness version there's the flashlight version the um observer yeah version of the risings and passings and then there's this collapsing of that into there's a field there's a field that's aware and and the weird thing is as this kind of trips people out when they hear and your body and is arising in the field so you're not 
it's not coming from you going that way. It's like, it's everywhere. And your body's like a wave in the ocean. And so I'll do, I'll do what, so you can use your attentional system, which everyone's pretty good at, and bring your attention to an object and then just leave it there and, and let your attentional system like be, okay, that system is doing that. Now, have awareness, turn around, unhook, and be aware of the space between you and feel the space between you and the object. And now have awareness, feel back through that which is above your shoulders until it feels the awareness that has your back. And now if you're doing anything, you're resting back as that awareness, which then discovers that there's a field of awareness that's already effortlessly mindful, effortlessly aware of your body, and the object. And that's just been happening all along, but we've been trying to concentrate, <laughs> trying to focus, trying to get the default mode to cooperate. And meanwhile, there's a bigger system available. So that, that move scientifically hasn't quite caught on, but I feel like I wanna make that like, the attentional scientists get that like for AD people with ADD, ADHD, that I've taught a lot of people individually how to focus from the embodied open-hearted field um, because it's easier to focus from the flow. Um, and I think it can become more uh, just normal. There's the there's the birth of of from the holistic into the contracted that is then seen to be contracted through inquiry, released back into the whole. And that seems to be a great mechanism for this intelligence to um fall asleep, wake up, play with itself endlessly. Yeah. 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 So, you know, so it's that getting used to just recognizing, realizing, uh, familiarizing the, the Tibetan word for meditation is familiarize. So once you recognize, you realize just familiarize, then lose it. No big surprise. Just <laughs> re-recognize. Right. So it's my little. I love mantra. that. Small glimpses. <laughs> right. Familiarize. If no, forgot, no big lose it. No big, no big surprise. Just re-recognize. Lose it. No big surprise. Just recognize. Right. 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 <laughs> right. Yeah, beautiful. Lock. So so nice. Ah. Thank you. Yes, so welcome. Very good to to connect with you and geek out with you and right. <laughs> go deep. You know, go deep and and let other people kind of hear a conversation between us that should share that. Just us being us, talking about what we love, what we experience, and trying to imperfectly articulate and communicate with each other. And hopefully, others can hear a little bit of that and be inspired to give it a try yes yes and i found uh i found a lot of uh love here between us it feels really beautiful thank you Alex. and i um i feel like it's been uh, successfully emanated through the conversation and that there are um <clears throat> there are an, an awesome amount of ways to to engage if you guys would like i mean first we would love to thank you thank Locke for coming on the show thank everybody for watching also mm -hmm. and um we would love to hear from you so if you guys want to um, drop a comment below and let us know um what resonated um you guys can always uh like the video and share the video if it resonated. That's a powerful way to 
continue spreading this. Um, you can subscribe to our channel. You can also subscribe to Locke's channel. His YouTube will be in the bio. You can find a lot of great free content there. Also on his Instagram and Twitter, those links will be in the bio. You can find all of his books uh, on his website. We'll have uh, that link down there as well. I highly recommend The Way of Effortless Mindfulness and also Shift into Freedom, just powerful reads, uh, direct, loving. You can feel the love in the books. Um, and also you can find the affiliate link to Effortless Mindfulness, to the mobile meditation. Um, and give that a go. I've been uh, playing around with it and it's very direct. What Locke shared with us through the, uh, the glimpse practices is just dived into even more deeply and regularly. So give that a go, check that out. And anything else, Locke? No, I think that's it. Um, you know, I look forward to meeting people and just to invite people to give this direct path a try. It's so beautiful. There's many different ways. There's other teachers, other, you know, don't feel like there's only one way. Keep trying because I find that people are like, mm, I don't know. No. No. Oh. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Just stay with it. Keep trying a different door. Try this door. Try that door. Right. But then don't try any. Don't just don't try at all. Right. And hopefully you'll be in the in the soup. You know, you'll be in the yes, yes. In it and it'll find you because it's already here. That's the main thing. It's already within you. It's already who you are. It's just a little covered over. And we're finding out how to drop or open, let go, turn over. But what is it that lets go? And what is it? that it lets go into, and then what is it that includes everything that exploration is, uh, is possible and just really quite extraordinary. Yeah. And then what does that recognition bring forth into yeah. Yeah. our world? How much more love, peace, unity, prosperity, abundance for all is possible. It's, all we know it is we know we know it is but we like to play the game of we are separate from these other people and that we would like more for ourselves and that whole game and um <clears throat> but the pie can grow for everybody from a place of unity and love and we know that that's uh, where where it's all heading yeah yeah it's for this is not an individual you know go to a cave or a monastery this is literally let's awaken together in this world and and live and then make responses and compassionate activity that flows naturally from this uh, clear seeing and courageous motivation. Yeah. So. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. And <laughs> I feel I feel powerful uh, with a continued exploration with Locke and the Effortless uh, Mindfulness uh, Institute as well as offerings. So I'm really looking forward to that and just cross-pollinating our networks and uh, super excited for that. Um, let's go ahead and wrap uh, the recording and then you and I just for a moment can stay together, Locke, okay? Thank you. All right, thanks everyone. We love you so much. Bye-bye. Bye everyone. <laughs>